Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Summer Cooler and Smoothie Session. It's an awesome day to learn about some great summer coolers and smoothie. And with us, we have an amazing facilitator today. We have Leslie DK, who is a certified holistic health coach through the, new, um, through the Institution of Integrative Nutrition with additional certifications from the Natural Gourmet Institute or and also Matthew Kenny Culinary Institute, AKA Plant Lab. She is the founder of Feeding Your Goals, a company that is focused on nutrition, healthy lifestyles and recipes that help individuals feel better and live more vibrant and energetic lives. I just love it so much because I know we're going to feel better after we get these recipes and we're going to be living our best energetic lives once we start putting these healthy smoothies and natural summer coolers into place and into our bodies. So without further ado, Leslie, I'm going to just send it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so nice to be here today, you guys. This is really um, a passion of mine. I love sharing these kinds of things and teaching people how to do it because I love seeing how they react and how they feel better. I like watching how, what the results end up doing for them. It's really, it's really great. It's very fulfilling. So without further ado, we will get into why coolers and smoothies. Okay. So first of all, I think, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Dr. Andrew Weil, but he is one of the integrative medicines, you know, founders. He founded the integrative medicine, medicine Institute at university of Arizona. And he, th he has told me that, one of the first things he would do in most people's diets is to remove soda. So why? Because it has so much sugar, it has artificial coloring, some that are even carcinogenic, caramel coloring is in Coca-Cola and is, is car has been found to be carcinogenic. There's, you know, anyway, all kinds of sodas have, you know, natural flavors, which are not natural. That's not a regulated word. They use it very loosely. They also can contain artificial colors and flavors. Um, stabilizers. I just read this morning, actually, on EWG, which is the Environmental Working Group, has uh, an article on these stabilizers called BVO, which is brominated vegetable oil, which damages your nervous system. And it's actually in a lot of um, commercial drinks that we drink. It's not even allowed in the EU. So um, they have banned it. So they're trying to, they often get people to sign petitions to help ban things. Um, I encourage you to look at them and follow them. They're great. It's ewg.org. Um, and they just contain artificial sugar, added sugar, I mean, sorry, artificial sweeteners and added sugars, both of which are not necessarily not good for us. And especially not in large quantities like supersized things. Um, so, you know, anybody who's got a sugar, blood sugar issue or, you know, diabetes issue, um, definitely want to swap out those. You don't, you know, need to focus on giving them up completely, but just try introducing something like we're going to try today and see how that makes you feel really focus on how it makes you feel. And then you may end up developing a new healthier habit. So let's go while why coolers and smoothies. Okay. So coolers, um, well, I, it's really just an, another drink for another word for like a soda, say, let's say, um, you know, we're just going to have like a cell. I mean, it could be something as simple as seltzer with just a squeeze of lime or lemon. And that's what, honestly, what my husband does almost every day <laughs> he's hooked on it. And so it could be as simple as that. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, but we are going to make a, um, a recipe called a cucumber quencher today. That's going to be our cooler. Then we're going to make a watermelon chia fresca, and that has unique um, nutritional benefits, which I love, and it's a very versatile drink. Um, and then we're going to finish it off with a decadent whip, um, mint chip smoothie. And this is one of my favorites. I even had it for dessert last night. You can have it for, I love things that you can, that are nutritious enough to have for breakfast, but delicious enough to have for dessert. That's kind of like the golden, the golden thing for me. So I love those kinds of recipes. So these are three winners and, um, let's see, we'll start with the cucumber cooler. Um, and I'll just kind of 
Some of the benefits you will see, I mean, some of the things that when I see people switching to plant-based diets and incorporating more plants in their, in their diet, um, they see more energy, they see clearer skin, sometimes their teeth get whiter, they might shed some weight. If they are overweight, they might gain some weight. If they're underweight, which is the beauty of it, you want weight balance, not necessarily to be skinny because that's not necessarily healthy as we know all the time. Um, you want to, it'll strengthen your immune system can help you with sleep and that helps with energy and energy is the key because if you have the energy you're going to want to do the things you're going to be able to do the things that you want to do that make you have a feel fulfilled right if you don't have the energy then it's it's just it's that's really a tough losing battle so um, so with the cucumbers smooth or the cucumber quencher, we have only a few ingredients here and it starts with a cucumber. Now, this is not the ideal <laughs> cucumber. I didn't make it to the farmer's market. I had ran out of time yesterday, but so I had to go to Trader, run by Trader Joe's. And I, that was before I went to this other fancier market, which um, I could have, but I thought this would be a good example of what to try to avoid because cucumbers are actually on the dirty, there's a dirty dozen list that EWG does as well um, that are the produce that you want to sort of try to avoid because they have um, heavy use of pesticides and cucumber is on that list or at least it's close to the top. So, or close to the top 10. So, and also just packaging in plastic is not ideal because you'll get some plastic exposure and also it's just bad for the environment. But you know what? We have to do what we have to do sometimes and that's okay. So we're gonna use this cucumber that I found. And also if you are using a cucumber like this, I would recommend not necessarily using the skin just because it could be pesticides exposed. So you just, I would, even though skin does have benefits, it has a lot of silica in it, which is good for your joints and your skin. But I would, if it's not organic, I would just take or peel the skin off. Um, so I'm gonna get my platter here. And also this drink can be made three different ways. We are gonna probably focus on the most simple way to do it, but I have behind me what is called a juicer right there. Have you guys, have you guys, any of you guys have a juicer? Is there anyone that has a juicer? Oh, thank you for putting up that recipe. Um, if you don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> I was given to, for, somebody gave it to me for my birthday many years ago, and it's been great. And if we have time at the end, I might actually show you how to make it through a juicer. But the second way to do it would be in a blender. We're gonna use this for the next two drinks. So I would prefer to not get this blender dirty three times. <laughs> And then I'm just going to show you the simplest way, but to do it in the blender, you would basically just put all the ingredients except for the seltzer water in there. And then you would strain it. You would need a good strainer like this, like that has a pretty fine mesh. And then you would just take that, pour it in here over this, the a bowl and then just strain it out and then take that juice and pour it into your glass and add some seltzer. And that would be it. It's really only one more step. It's not huge. So, but today we're just going to do a simple muddle. I'm going to put this aside. Um, and we're just going to take our cucumber slices that I did not take the rind off. Um, but I just, I will do it this time though. Actually, I'm going to take, hold on a sec. I'm going to get a peeler. I love this one, this OXO. Oh, sorry, this is a Kuhn Recon. I think it's about $10 from Target or somewhere I got it. Um, and you're just gonna peel, right? And then we're gonna slice. And you see, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. There we go. Uh, and feel free, like I said, to pop in any questions while, you're, while I'm doing stuff because I can easily talk while I'm working. This is gonna go into the compost. And then I'm just gonna clear this off so I can slice. This is really, really simple. And you could do this for, oh my gosh, just a hot day. Um, you know, if you wanted to make a mocktail out of it, you could do that. You could put a little bit of that botanical gin that they have on the market now. I don't really like that stuff um, personally, but if you like it, um, you can certainly try it. Um, or if you want an occasional, okay, so I'm gonna put the cucumber slices in. Then it could, we're gonna get, let me get my recipe out. Then we get the basil leaves, I believe. We get 
four basil leaves. I have a fresh basil plant that I got. I did go to Trader Joe's. That's where I got a lot of this stuff. And then I got some, save the strawberries. So we're just going to use, these are pretty large. So, and I like buying the whole plant because, and also pay attention to where things are from. This cucumber is actually from Canada. So I was surprised. I'm like, I guess there's not cucumbers growing right now here around here. So that was what I found and um, not ideal, but better than nothing, right? And then this basil was sitting next to some pre-packaged basil that was from another country. And this basil is in a pot, in a plant from here. So it will keep giving me basil as long as I take care of it. So that is ideal. And it's a way better economically choice, a better economic choice. Um, we're gonna do a small slice of ginger um, for this purpose. I, If it's organic ginger, again, I wouldn't necessarily peel it, but this one, I'm gonna put it towards the bottom so that it gets muddled. Um, if I was doing this in a juicer, I might add a jalapeno too, because that little, we give it a little bit of a kick. And that's, um, jalapenos are actually good for, um, hot peppers are good for metabolic like energy. I'm sorry, appetite and, um, and metabolism. So again, if you've got blood, so blood sugar issues, those can help. Um, there's just a long list of things that you can do. Um, and we will talk about a lot of them. We're going to put in just a tablespoon of fresh lemon. I just took a lemon and I squeezed it. Now, if you don't have lemon available, because it's also a, this is a winter fruit. We have it here year round, so we're lucky, but you can often find it in the freezer. Um, or I like to freeze it in the winter. And then, so I have it kind of all year round. Um, that's another option. I just get a bunch of lemons and free and put them in small containers and freeze them. So that's an option. Um, so just check the freezer, see if you've got any options there. Um, and then we're just going to take that and muddle it. I have a little kind of a cocktail muddler here that I can use. It's pretty small. So I like to often just find a bigger paddle and just kind of really mash it down. Oops, it's gonna wanna cover this up so it doesn't squirt on you. Just muddle it down, which is just basically smashing it. So that's kind of fun, right? If you have kids, this would be really fun for them, I think. Kind of play with that. And you might want to even do this in a cocktail shaker because then you can strain off the, the vegetables or the fruit and vegetables, obviously. Let's see. And then we're going to put in some ice. And we're going to just top it off with a little seltzer. Now leave a little room because you may want to sweeten it with something. I don't like sweet things personally too much, but I like, I'm very sensitive to sweet now that I've given up sugar mostly, but, or given up refined sugar. I was to say, I eat plenty of whole food sugars sources, but um, once you give up refined sugar, you'll find that your taste for it really kind of goes away quickly. And it kind of even may, almost can make you sick when you feel sick, when you have it. Okay. So there we have it. Let's see if it needs anything. Oh, that's good. No, I, yeah, some of you might, for me, it's perfect. But for some of you who are used to a sweet, you could put just a little bit of honey in here. You could put a little bit of maple syrup. You could also, where did I, oh, this one. If you have blood sugar issues or you're diabetic, you might try using this coconut blossom sugar. This is a little bit of an investment. It's not, I mean, I, think, I can't remember how much this costs, but it's not cheap, but it lasts forever. You don't need very much of it. And it doesn't, it really has a pretty long shelf life. I think I bought this, I think it lasts like a year or something. So, so you would just take, and it's a little thick. So you're going to have to really kind of work it in. And you could even do a thing where you put it in another little bowl and you mix it with a little water first or sparkling water, if that appeals to you, and then mix it in. That would be easier as as a nice alternative as well. So I would recommend that with coconut blossom sugar if you're a diabetic, because um, this also is low glycemic, which means it absorbs in the body more slowly than, than say a honey or a maple syrup. So there you go. There's our drink number one. Okay. Mm. Really good. Oh, another option you could do. I found this. This is a new product at Trader Joe's. I don't know if you guys are Trader Joe's fans. I do shop there every once in a while. I've been going there 
a little bit this summer because anyway, but um, they have this aloe vera juice now and it's nice. It's organic, comes in this huge, huge tub. And I can't remember, I think it costs about, I can't remember, $10. I can't remember, but it's a lot. So you could put some in the freezer. You know, I, I divided it up. I put it in, in one of my milk containers and then I put the rest in the freezer and I've been using it every now and then. And that is also super hydrating. And you could use that in this drink as well. I would do a little bit, not all of the liquid as this, because it does have a little bit of a flavor that might not appeal, but it's really good for you. It's great for your skin. It's great for hydration, great for healing. Um, it also, the other thing to be careful with aloe is it can, in people who have I have IBS. I have uh, always had it my whole life. It's irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. So I've always had a sensitive gut. So if you're like me and you have a sensitive gut, you want to be careful because if you're prone to diarrhea, this can cause um, bowel or can sort of gets, it increases motility as we can say it in sort of softer language. Um, but this, um, so just be aware of that. If you have a tendency towards something or you're going through, you know, you've eaten something bad and your stomach's a little upset, I would not necessarily, I'd be careful, just use a little bit and see how it goes. But um, anyway, so that's another idea for that. Um, okay, so let's move on to the watermelon. Um, right, let me see, I'm gonna put this here so I can make it again, because it's really good. <laughs> um, is anybody making anything alongside? I'd be curious to see in the chat if you guys are. That one I would definitely start. So it's just literally cucumber, basil leaves. You can swap out the basil leaves for mint easily. That would be delicious as well. Um, also might make it a little more sweet if you have a sweet tooth. Um, yeah, there's lots of options here and you can just, it's a great base for stuff. Um, I would definitely recommend that one. It's yummy, yummy, yummy. I think you might pay quite a lot of money at a New York City restaurant for something like that. <laughs> I used to live in New York, so I know, and I live in San Francisco. I know how things cost on menus. And now there's so many mocktails coming on menus. I think it's great, but it's just funny to me how expensive they are when you can make it at home. So, um, okay. So number two, we're gonna do the watermelon. And this is gonna involve the blender. I know it's over here. Okay, let's get this knife off of here. It's over here. Okay, so I was telling you, I went to buy, I wanted to go to the farmer's market and buy strawberries yesterday, but they, I didn't get a chance. So I went to a fancy market that has very fresh, delicious produce and expensive. And these were just, they're beautiful organic strawberries yesterday, but literally today they were already starting to sort of go bad. See, they got a little mold. So you don't want that, right? So I'm just gonna, what I did was kind of cut around them. Um, I just cut like, if there was one that had any mold on it, I just kind of cut that off. Yeah, see, like that. So just slice it off. And because these are beautiful organic strawberries, I am not going to cut the tops off. I'm going to use the tops because those count as leafy greens. So I, unless, and it's only small amount, so I don't think it'll affect our color. I haven't seen it affect the color before, but if you're worried about that, I would just, if you're, you really want a bright pink or red color, I would Jab and cut the tops off, but that's really the only way to do that, um, unless they're not organic. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so we've got our watermelon here. I what I did last night was, and this is a kind of a hack, is I cut them up and I put them in the freezer. I cut a whole. This is a whole small. This is the same thing. When you're buying watermelon, I, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but you basically want it. This is not a great, like this, like I said, they were kind of past their, just past their peak yesterday or yeah, I think it was yesterday I shot for these. Um, you want a, a kind of a blonde spot somewhere because it shows that it ripened on the ground. And then you also want to be able to like knock it and hear a little, like a hollowness. And that does have a nice little feel. So I thought, oh, it's okay. It's just not perfect. So anyway, I bought that. But, you know, this is also equally a good drink with, uh, can't with any other kind of melon, like a honeydew or, uh, orange melon. And there's a lot of beautiful melons coming out right now, at least out here. So 
I think if you did that though, you'd probably want to skip the strawberries just because I think the color might not work. I haven't tried it, but um, I would just stick with the melon and they act, the melon pairs well, really, really well with mint. So you could do something like that. So um, those would be great. I'm curious to work with those because they looked much, much better. Okay. So there's the recipe we have stuff here. Sorry about that. Okay. Oh, and like, and when you put like a cutting board on your counter, you want to make sure that there's like a towel or something underneath it. Or what I did was just put a cork pad that I have as a it's like a cork placemat I had, but a towel would work or a silicone pad or something like that. That's not uneven, but it will keep it from moving. See, so, cause you don't want it to be moving when you're using a knife and slicing. So let me see what's the recipe. I think it was over here. Oh no, sorry, it's behind me. Here it is. Okay, so we have four cups of seedless watermelon cubes. Now I'm just gonna, Anybody needs me to show how to cut cut a watermelon, um, just say something. But I think pretty much it. And these are seedless. This is seedless, and it's still a little bit frozen. Just going to kind of work. These are wonderful silicone containers. They are kind of a great investment, great for the environment because you are not using any plastic. They don't leach any plastic on your food. Um, they can go from, they can go in the dishwasher. They're amazing and they last forever. And they're, they're, so they're pricey, but they eliminate a lot of spending on plastic bags and waste and all that stuff. So I highly recommend, and I only need one or two of them. So but I think they, they cost a little bit. Um, let's see. So we're going to add the strawberries. Just put everything in the blender. So we need water, a little bit of water, one and a half cups of filtered water. I have a filter right here. Hopefully you guys have some filtered water or you can just buy um, distilled water or get it. Sometimes they have it at the market and you can just refill a reusable thing. This is one and a third. Okay, let me put this in here. I'm gonna mute you guys when I do do the um, blending so you guys don't have to hear it. And then we save the chia seeds. I'll talk about those in a sec. Don't put those in yet. Um, and then we're gonna put some on some lime. So now to get the best of your lime, about one lime and one lemon, this is sort of a rough thing. If it calls, if a recipe calls for one tablespoon of lemon or lime juice, it's about, and I emphasize about a tablespoon for a half. So this would be about two tablespoons, but you never know how much juice is in a fruit like this. So anyway, to get the most out of it, you kind of rub it like this with your, and it gives you kind of a good hand massage while you're doing it. So it feels really good. And then you cut it in half. And you take your juicer and I'm gonna see, I'm gonna use a combo of lemon and lime today just for fun, just to mix it up. We're gonna squeeze it in there. Yep, exactly one tablespoon. Okay, so that's the lime, and then I'm going to do a lemon. Same thing, get my hand working. Do this again. I'm going to do it right over here because I can't. There we go. Right over here. So we need one more, I think I'm gonna go lime. Oops. That lime, this lime is really juicy. The lemon is not quite as juicy. It tells me it's a better lime, okay. So. Then. I think we get a pinch of salt. This just sort of balance out a lot of sweet in here. Oh, my salt's over here. A pinch of salt. And let me see here. 
just check for all the ingredients. Yes, we've got everything in there. Okay, now it's in my blender. Put the blender over here so you can see how it goes. Well, no, it's over here. Okay, so here we are with our blender. This is a Vitamix. It's one of the best pieces of equipment that I have. I use it all the time. But I would say that um, this would work when I also, I, my son has a Nutra bullet. Those work really well. They're not as expensive. And um, I think they work pretty, they work perfectly fine. So um, anyway, here we're gonna go. I'm gonna put you guys on mute. How do I do that? Oh, here we go. How do I mute? Oh, here we go, sorry. Hey, Leslie, while you're um, blending, some a question was, can this also be done frozen with ice? I hope Leslie can hear us. Okay, so that didn't take long. Now this is actually kind of a frozen watermelon chia fresca because my watermelon didn't quite have time to defrost this morning. Oh, but, great, um, we had a frozen question of um, how can we um, have these as frozen drinks as well? Is it just putting ice in? Absolutely, no, well. Or you can uh, freeze your fruit maybe. Yeah, just freeze the, I would freeze the fruit. You know, that's actually the best way to get the most nutrition of anything really is just to take stuff. And we'll talk about this in the next recipe as well, but take stuff and when, it, when you buy it and put it in the freezer. So it's the freezer is such a great tool and it's so great for winter too, because you can put stuff in the freezer now and have it in the winter when you're really, it, where it is harder to find fresh produce, especially like on the East coast. So, um, I just love using the freezer. It's really, really handy. There's so, I mean, there's so much there you can do. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is kind of like a frozen one. And so we're just gonna pour this in here. And so typically what I would do, and this is actually gonna be nice because it is gonna, it's kind of warming up here. So it is kind of a nice idea. Um, so then you wanna take your chia seeds. Now this is, this calls for a tablespoon in the whole thing. So, and I actually accidentally poured this before. So let me think, I think I wanna pour this back and do this again. So let's put a tablespoon of chia seeds. Now you could use white or um, dark. The darker ones probably have a few more polyphenols. Dark things tend to do that, tend to have that. But I like white just for the color because the dark might muddy the color a little bit. Um, so we're just gonna put a whole tablespoon in this whole recipe and I'm gonna stir it in using this so that all the chia, the chia seeds just kind of stuck to it. And I'm gonna use my handy dandy little drink thing here. I love this little thing. Well, that works not. I don't wanna blend this because what'll happen if you, if you start blending the chia seeds in this recipe, it will thicken it. Cause chia seeds are actually a great thickener. In fact, people use them as egg replacers all the time. So, but here we're just using it or um, to get the chia seed benefit. Um, you want, you do kind of want to let them sit for a little bit so that they're more digestible, um, but they're really great for, um, okay, so chia seeds, I don't know if you guys know about them, but this is a really good investment for your pantry. I mean, you buy it, 
and it's, I don't know, it's not the cheapest thing on the shelf, but it, they last forever. And you only need like a tablespoon for a whole recipe for money for more, four to six people. So it's not, it's going to last you a while. I store them in the fridge because they're high protein. Anything, most things that are high protein should be stored in the fridge. They'll last longer that way. Um, protein tends to go bad. So I really, I think this is one of the best things you can add to your pantry or your fridge. Um, and I just buy them in the bag and I put it in a glass jar and I put the label on it. So I know what it is. Um, even though I always knew what <laughs> chia seed looks like, but you never know. Some people will come along, but they are so great. They're an incredible source of protein. They're incredibly hydrating. Um, they are they're very anti-inflammatory. They have a huge amount. Inflammation, a large source of inflammation is too much omega-6 in our, it's an inflammatory fat, which is very commonly found in meat, red meat and things like that. But this has, if you balance it out with omega-3, which is anti, more anti-inflammatory, you can bring down that. It's really hard to reduce the omega-6 in our diets, but you can easily up the omega-3, which will offset and balance out those, those um, omega-6 inflammatory fats. So um, healthy fat, healthy protein, um, great source of energy. They are just a powerhouse. They literally in South America, they these runners that run through the desert for hundreds of miles, they will drink water with chia seeds before their run and they won't need anything. It's amazing. So they are just these little wonder things. I just love them. And I even bring them, you know, when I travel sometimes because they also have a ton of fiber and the fiber helps get things. They, they not only um, add, coat the lining of your intestine, but they help things move. So it really, they're really just these wonder things and it's so easy to travel with right because you know they're just so tiny and just bring a little container of them if you're going to visit a relative or something just and you know traveling is hard on your tummy so that always I always bring stuff like that now um you could muddle some mint in here if you wanted um or you could just decorate it with mint like that or basil I mean that mint and basil are pretty interchangeable um and they're both delicious so I would recommend. And there you have it. Yummy, yummy. Okay, let's taste it. Always, we should have tasted it before I decorated it. Plenty sweet for me. I definitely don't need to add any. Watermelon strawberries have a lot of natural sugar and natural fiber. So if you're worried, if you are worried about your blood sugar, I would not worry about this drink because it has so much fiber in it that your that fiber is going to slow down the absorption of that sugar. I mean, yes, it is still sugar. So if you want to, you could also protect yourself even further from a blood sugar spike by having some green vegetable beforehand that would coat, that would further coat the lining of your, of your um, intestine to even further slow that absorption of the sugar. So check out if you're watching your blood sugar, um, just see how you react to it and then, then adjust the dial, you know, see if you need to add more vegetables or some more roughage before you drink the drink, but Oh, it's so good. Oh, this is so delicious. I love it. Mm. Cheers, you guys. That is just yummy. Okay. So on to number three, we're just moving along. Okay. I'm going to have to put this in a container and rinse this out. So give me a second. Think of any questions you might have. This is a good time to take a pause. See what you have, but put this in a container. Hold on. I do have a picture. I'm just going to get it out of here. I'm having friends over later and I'm definitely going to be serving this. It's so good. So pretty too. And you could water it down. That's another option. Put some sparkling water, in it. you know, whatever you, um, whatever suits you. There's a lot of ways to be creative with drinks. That's what I really like about it. Almost can become your own little comments in the kitchen. Okay, I'm just going to work this out. So we can get to the main.
this little chia seeds tend to get stuck. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, so we are on to our dessert. Well, our breakfast and dessert, I'll say. <laughs> I added, I've added for both breakfast and dessert because it is that nutritious. Um, this here. It's the night. Okay, so let me grab the, we call these in cooking school mise en place. So it's everything that you need in this recipe on a tray. And it's just nice to have all that stuff gathered ahead of time so that you know you're not missing anything. Um, of course, once you get more comfortable, like I do, I kind of, sometimes I'm in a hurry and I wing it and then you're like, oh, I don't have X. And then once you realize how easy it is to, or it can be to substitute, you can't always, but you can substitute things and you can feel com get comfortable doing that. So here is, this is a little larger, as you see, this is a little more decadent, a little more involved, but it's not that big of a deal, I promise. We'll learn. Okay, so I'm soaking my cashews. Now, like I said in the recipe, you don't have to use raw cashews. Um, you can use cashew butter. Cashew butter is delicious. It's very, it's a very sweet nut butter, like I think, and that and peanut butter, I think are the sweetest. Um, almonds a little less so. So if you you know, if you do worry about blood sugar, you could try this with, I don't, I don't think, I think it's going to be fine because there's a ton of fat and fiber in here to slow the absorption of any sugars. And there's really no, as you see, we've added no sugars to anything so far. So everything's just natural sugar in its own, in its natural form. So whole food sugar. Um, this is a topping. I will save this for later. I'm just going to move these strawberries here down with those. Um, these are the chips we are going to use today. These are cacao nibs. I buy them in bulk. Oh, I should tell you about my sourcing. Um, so I, okay, let's take a break and talk about sourcing because this recipe involves a little bit of sourcing. My favorite sources, I'm going to do break these down. Um, well, I like to buy in bulk mostly because you say you you avoid a lot of waste if you buy in bulk. Say you need a cup for a recipe, but you're going to buy a whole package like this and, you know, whatever, you don't need a cup. And then, so buying in bulk is great. A place, I don't know on the East Coast where they can, where you can do that specifically, but I know here on the West Coast, you can do it at Sprouts. I think Sprouts is maybe, there, I'm sure there's places that offer that. I would just look that up. Um, so that's a kind of good thing to buy in bulk. Spirulina is a good thing to buy in bulk. Um, I bought this obviously at Whole Foods. This one is an organic and non-GMO. This is the gold standard for labels is both of these. So if you can't find both of these, this one is great too, just organic um, or non-GMO. But I think the two of them together is the gold standard. And again, I take it out of the package if possible. I put it in a um, just a recycled glass container and I know what it is, but this, does have a shorter life. And so if you could buy this in bulk, I would recommend it. It's hard. It would, I have not found it in bulk. I don't think, or it's to, I buy it in a small container, but that's another one to good to have in your pantry. Cause it's a great, great source of plant protein and calcium. Honestly, um, spirulina has like, um, 26 times more calcium than milk. So get a load of that. It is so rich in antioxidants and crazy flavonoids and everything. It's so good for you. But the downside, sometimes there's a downside. It's, it's very, it's a little pungent. It's a little, see, it's a little funky. So I, you just have to be a little careful in this recipe. It's easy to hide it because we're using peppermint and that covers it up. So, and we're using very little. So if you use it in a smoothie, I would just start with a very little amount and see how that goes. Um, Let's see what else we have. We have flaxseed and what the, the gold standard here, this is organic, but um, this also is very much like chia seed. It has a lot of omega-3s, which are, it's a high, high protein, high fiber seed and lots of, lots of antioxidants. But, and this one has, flaxseed is unique in that it actually binds with bad estrogen and clears bad estrogen. I've literally seen people use it for one day who have menopause symptoms 
and they're gone within a day, like, or they're better within a day. So it's a pretty amazing ingredient. I try to like use it as much as I can, um, you know, just now and then or a few times a week or whatever. Um, so the gold standard here is to grind it yourself. It's not that you have to, I went many years just buying it ground, which is fine. You don't want to use it whole in a recipe. You really want to grind it. So I just use a spice grinder. If you guys want, want to see that, I can show it to you, but, um, you can even use like one of those old, like I converted for many years, an old coffee grinder to grind my spices. And if you just clean it out with some white rice, just grind up some white rice, it cleans it out. Um, then you can use it for your flaxseed. So that's a benefit of uh, hemp seeds. I love as well. This is, these are all great for your pantry and you can play with these. You can put in your smoothies. You don't need to buy another protein powder. Those things are filled with gunky stuff. Just have some of these and you're good to go. This is tons and tons again of protein. Um, this hemp seed even has chlorophyll in it. So that's why it's green. It has a little green to it. That's actual chlorophyll, which obviously has incredible nutrients. So lots and lots of benefits there. Um, we're going to use vanilla extract. I'm, I make my own. Um, I just take vanilla bean and I soak it in. This one was bourbon made in January. It takes four months. So anyway, and then you just, you just cut the beans in and pour the pour the liquor in and, and you shake it up every once in a while and you make your own. It's a little bit cheap. I think it is a fair amount cheaper than buying it, but you know, vanilla extract will last forever. So, and you use it in baking and it's so much. And vanilla actually has great benefits. It has, it's, if you buy the extract, not the flavoring, don't get the flavoring, get the extract because that's actually extracted from the real vanilla pod. Um, and that is, has a lot of antioxidants. It's actually naturally mood boosting. So that's kind of nice, calming. It's got a lot of benefits. Um, today we're going to use a uh, peppermint essential oil. I don't have peppermint extract on tap on hand, but you can find that in the same section that you would find the vanilla extract. Um, I just have so much of this. I decided to use it and it's just a few drops. Um, essential oils are really great to have and play with. You can do so much with them and they also last forever. Um, and then the sweetener here, we are going to use a whole food sweetener here. This, my favorite is actual dates. So dates have a lot, tons of vitamins and minerals in them and tons of fiber. So the sugar in the dates will be slow to absorb. Um, this is a, not a medjool date, like I mentioned in the recipe, just because I ran out of those. I have these ones that I actually even like better, but they're harder to find. They're called Bari dates, B-A-H-R-I. Um, I go, we're lucky here. We live near Palm Springs where they grow most of the dates that are consumed in this country, if not, and they actually ship to the Middle East during Ramadan. I mean, they they have incredible dates down there. I'm a little worried about these potential floods that they're talking about flooding my dates. But um, anyway, so I go down there and actually buy dates from there because they're so fresh when I, when I can get there. Um, so th these are Bari dates, they're a little smaller. So we are gonna use three of, I, I say two to three for one medjool date. Medjool dates tend to be larger. Um, but they are delicious. You can just eat them on their own as a snack, as a healthy sweet. Like if you want to have a sweet craving, um, we love to put dates and fill them with peanut butter or nut butter and put a chocolate chip on it. We call it a day. It's so yummy. And you can even put them in the freezer for a little frozen bite. Um, so I'm just putting in these dates. I'm just pulling out. They do have a seed you want to remove. Um, I would not bother buying the pitted ones because just more processing and you know you'll pay more for that it's pretty easy to do right oh, wait i almost put the pit in there um and i'm going to make it extra sweet so i'm going to do three per thing, just in that kind of mood and but you could you know it's probably better to go lighter with the sweets and then add later if you need it so um and we're going to put in we're going to strain off and put in our strained cashews. But like I said, I've made this a million times with cashew butter and I think it's really even almost better. To, cashew butter just has a little more sweet to it. Cashews you wanna soak for no more than four hours, like two, really two hours if it's hot out. I, you know, and I would even maybe do it in the fridge if it's hot out, cause cashews tend to mold. So you wanna be careful with that. They don't wanna be. Okay, so let's see, where's the rest of it? 
wait, we're going to. So this this recipe is way more substantial in many ways. It's um got more, it's got fat. Um, the first two don't have any fat. I usually like to combine, put some kind of fat in everything I consume. So just because it's that balance and the slows the blood sugar and everything, and also will lead to more fullness and satisfaction over the long run. We've been way too fat shamed, um, you know, in many ways, not only our bodies, but our food. So um, fat is actually our friend in, you know, not in small amounts. You want to have it really with every meal, every, especially every dessert. So, which has more, which will have more sugar. I'm going to put the cacao nibs aside for a second. We'll talk about that in a sec. Okay. Now, while well, we just put this all in, I need to get some filtered water in here. Okay. We'll do one and a half cups. We're almost out of time. We will get this done. One and a half cups of filtered water. We're just gonna add everything in except for the cacao nibs. It's as easy as that. Just put everything in the blender except the cacao. I need my tablespoon. Okay, there's the hemp seeds. Here's the ground flax. Ground flax. Um, if you don't have these, you could certainly make that without it. I just think the, be the, the nutritional benefits are a really good reason to add that. Half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of vanilla. A few drops of the peppermint essential oil. Two, three. Um, I have leaves. Oh, I forgot the mint. Um, forgot. Oh, I forgot the one thing. Okay, the dates are in there. The cacao. Let's just do the checklist. Um, flax meal. Oh, the frozen banana. Oh, frozen fruit. Okay, from here. My secret fridge stuff. So last night I just peeled a banana and I this was not as ripe as I would want it. Actually, with this recipe, if you want a sweet banana to sweeten something you want it really ripe and each whether it's more ripe or less ripe they have def different uh, benefits less more and less prebiotic fiber that kind of thing um we're going to do just this is how i do kale i need another one of those containers i just put it in a plastic bag but um you just take like a handful and that will be about a cup you know you don't have to be exact with this so i like kale so i'm going to put in more <laughs> And that's why I keep my kale when I get it home because I find oftentimes it just sits in the fridge and it goes bad fast. So I just strip it off the stem and put it in a bag and put it in the freezer and we'll, after washing it, of course. Um, that's that. Uh, I think the spirulina we need. One. This is just a quarter teaspoon. It's very little. I'm just going to eyeball that. Okay. So that has a strong Okay, and that I think is, oh, the mint leaves, hold on. I got this from my garden. I, I honestly, if you can grow one thing at home, grow mint leaves, it's so easy. Um, they are just, mint is very forgiving. I'm gonna eyeball this because I know we're running out of time. This is, otherwise I'd pack it in a quarter cup and make sure, but like I said, we can always add more later if it's not enough. I think this is gonna be good. And you know, if you don't have the mint leaves, you can just add more essential oil. You don't need it. So I just like to do that, but okay. So let me mute you. I think that's it.
Okay. So let's see. Let's give it a taste. Always want to taste because you can always adjust. And this could maybe use a pinch of salt. I mean, salt, if you're just using a small amount, it's actually good, a little good source of electrolytes, especially if you're using a good pink salt or something like that. Okay, that's good. Okay, three winners today. Okay, so we're gonna pour it in our glass. Now, at this point, you could um, put the cacao, stir them in here. But what I wanna do with the cacao nibs is keep them fresh because they will get a little soggy. So what I'll do is just kind of stir them into the glass because I'm not gonna serve this whole thing right now. And we're gonna put them on the top. We can stir them in. Actually, I think I will take that and stir it in a little bit. Mm, so good. Put a little bit of fresh coconut or shredded coconut and a little mint leaf. And there you go. See that? Yummy. <laughs> okay, guys. Now, cacao nibs, I didn't mention. Okay, so these are, why do you use this instead of chocolate chips? You could use your favorite chocolate chips if you wanted. You're not using that many. You know, if that's what you've got, certainly go ahead. But cacao nibs are really, really rich. They're the most antioxidant rich food on the planet. They are the purest form of the cacao bean, which is what chocolate comes from. Um, as it has so many antioxidants, some, one of the most anti, I think I said one of the most antioxidant rich plant foods on the planet. Um, and this is the least processed form. So it's going to keep all those nutrients intact rather than cooking them off. Once things get cooked, then it gets kind of like the, the nutrients kind of tend to go away or tend to re reduce. So this is the best form. The other thing I like about having this is that you, it forces you to chew the smoothie. So when you are chewing your smoothie, you're actually improving your digestion because you're going to release some of those digestive enzymes in your mouth by, by the act, just by the act of chewing, you actually need to chew in order to release those enzymes. Although sometimes when you're just thinking of like something that's delicious, like close your eyes and think of a lemon, you will notice that you start to salivate. And that is that, ha that, that action happening. So if you just go slow and think about it, you don't necessarily need to chew, but it does help to chew. So if that's clear, and that will help the whole digestion process. The fact that it's blended also means it's sort of pre-digested. So that's going to help with the digestion of this drink and all the absorption of those nutrients. So it's a super nutrient packed drink. You can drink it in the morning. You can drink it for before bed. Um, I had it for bed and I did, I didn't had a great night's sleep. I did not disturb my sleep at all because sometimes, you know, sugar or there's a little bit of caffeine or whatever might disturb people. But I don't think this would because it's got so much nutrition in it. Great for, you know, recovery or whatever, if you're an athlete, um, all that stuff. So anyway, or without further ado, I know there's a little bit of time left. If you guys have any questions or comments, did I go too fast? Do you feel like you're going to do any of these? <laughs> I don't know. I would recommend this one. So <laughs> oh, and you're welcome. Oh, the other thing before you go. So just store, you could store this in the fridge in like a glass ball jar, you know, just put it in an empty jar like this with a top, throw it, label it, throw it in the fridge and you've got a drink for the next day or two. So you could even put it in the freezer, last longer. Um, if you do freeze it because it's liquid, I would use a straight lined um, container because it doesn't burst that way. Anyway, so... Anyway, I hope that helps you guys. I hope you're inspired to go out and make some fun cooling drinks and hydrating drinks and delicious drinks this weekend. <laughs>